Let's talk now about optimizers. If we take it back to our diagram, where we've got f with x and theta coming in, y hat coming out, y and y hat feed into our loss. This is where we're going to work in now. We're going to work in the optimizer that is updating. One place that that can be seen is the loss function when we are looking at adding a penalty for the weights. We've seen, if we're using the standard loss function, that this can turn into a weight decay in the optimizer. So that was one case where we could either have uh, the penalty for the weights and the loss or a weight decay. In the optimizer. We're going to look at lots of other optimizers right now. And the one we're going to start with is standard gradient descent with momentum. So let's say we've got some theta sub i and some loss. Let's say we're here. Actually, let's make ourselves here. Okay. If we're using our standard gradient descent and a small learning rate, then we may get stuck in this local optimum. What momentum suggests is let's imagine we had a ball rolling down a hill. So we have a ball that's coming down here. That ball starts high enough and gets enough momentum, it's going to go shooting past here and past here to make it all the way into our global optimum. And that's kind of the idea we're going to be looking at. So that the Momentum is used for two things. It's really used to keep momentum so that we can uh, uh, accumulate some velocity. And it's also used to try and dampen oscillations. So momentum looks basically like this. So we are going to go ahead and take our gradient and use that to not directly update theta but instead to update some v, which is our velocity. So we're going to do something like v equals beta v plus our gradient. Beta is, of course, a hyperparameter between 0 and 1. If beta is 0, then v is just equal to the gradient. And then after we've done this, we update theta based not on the gradient itself, but based on our velocity. So what will happen? Let's look at this contour map of theta 1 and theta 2. So the contour map shows each of these ellipses is a constant loss. Let's look at this location. So here we've got some particular value of theta 1 and theta 2. And we can see that the gradient in the horizontal direction is less than the gradient in the vertical direction. The distance traveled over the loss, it, the distance traveled to get to that loss horizontally is much bigger than it is vertically. So we have a larger vertical gradient than we have a horizontal gradient. And what we want to avoid is having something like this, where we've got the large gradient in the vertical direction, so we take a large step vertically and a small step horizontally and then a large step vertically and a small step, and a large step and a small step, and a large step and a small step, like that, and back and forth and back and forth. Instead, our preference would be to take a small step, and then maybe a larger step horizontally, and a larger step horizontally, and somehow not also have that oscillations. And so the momentum is going to allow us to do that, and let's look why. So what the momentum does is basically says we take into account the history. So we take into account the previous velocity. So if we're starting here at a dead stop, our velocity is zero. And on the first step, we've got a small horizontal velocity or direction. And now our velocity is a little bit larger in the horizontal direction. Keep in mind that these are vectors. And so theta is a, is a vector of parameters. The partial derivative is a vector of derivatives. V is also a vector of the same shape. 
So if we look, let's say, at a table, so this is time, this is the gradient, and this is the vector, at time zero, let's say we have just a constant gradient for theta one. So this is going to be, I don't know, point 0.2. Then after in time period, the first time period, v is going to be some theta times v plus this. So it's going to be point 0.2. And then in the next step, it's going to be point 0.4. And the next step, it's going to be point 0.6. And the next step, point 0.8, and so on. So the this is there are marble building up velocity as it's going down. So that would say we take a small step to begin with, and a larger step, then a larger step, then a larger step, then a larger step. So that would give us this momentum for this small set of derivatives is going to end up with a large set of updates to theta, so that we'll adjust them more and more. On the other hand, if we look at the time and we look at the derivative with respect to theta 2, and then we look at v, and this is v sub 2, and this is v sub 1, right? So this is the first component of v, and this is the second component of v. At time step 0, we know v is 0. Or v starts at 0, but after the first time step, let's say. So let's say this is a point 0.9 because remember we said it's larger than theta 1. It's going up this way. And so here, our v2 is going to be 0.9. If on the next time step we've gone up here, and now we have a negative derivative, so let's say this is negative 0.4, then all of a sudden v2 is going to be 0.5 instead, so it'll be smaller. So it's not going to go down as far as we did here. It's going to go down less far. And then maybe our update here is a... Uh, So we actually, because of our momentum, went a little farther. So now we've got, let's say this is a negative 0 0.8. And so this would now be a negative 0.3. So we would have gone the same first step. And then our gradient is negative, but we're actually adding it to our previous value. The values here is actually using a beta of 1. Right, because we are taking the full measure of the previous v when we add in our new gradient. In any case, though, so here we did a 0.9, and then we have a negative 4 because it's down to get to the middle here. But we still are going past it because we are taking into account not only our current gradient, but our previous velocity. So it takes us a little bit to slow down. Now our negative gradient is even higher. We're going to add it to our previous gradients. So we're going to go down not as much. So we're not actually oscillating as much. These negatives and positives are going to be canceling each other out. This is traditional momentum. There's also a dampening version of the momentum. And the dampening version is where we add 1 minus beta. So if we add 1 minus beta, what we get is we remove the oscillations, but we don't have the marble-like effect of speeding up. Let's look at why that is. So let's say we have a beta of 0.5. So uh, this is going to give us, this here is going to give us an exponential moving average. Of the gradient. So we're never going to get these add-on effects where even though our average gradient is 0.2, our velocity can exceed 0.2. So here, no matter what the version, what the value of beta, we are going to get. So this is the traditional, and this is the exponential moving average version of v sub 1, and that's going to be 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0.2. So we just get, if we have a constant average, a constant value of the gradient, then the average of it is going to be that constant value. Here, we might get something like, let's say it's 0.9, 
um, to begin with, v was 0. So we actually might get an average of traditional, and this is the exponential moving average. So we might get, let's say, a 0.45 to begin with, so half of 0 and half of 0.9. And now it's half of 0.45 and half of negative 0.4. So that is approximately 0. And then half of 0 and half, well, well this is slightly 0. Different, because we're not even going to be there. The gradients are going to end up being different. But we can see the example of what's happening here. Is that we're just taking this exponential moving average.